Classic Gamer 74. I'm your host Anthony Gamer and today we're going to be talking about Nintendo related loss media. In the past I've discussed other forms of loss media like uh, Atari 2600 related uh, television and ColecoVision and with the fact that Nintendo had so many uh, I guess stringent rules for third-party gaming it was no surprise that sometimes games that would be discussed would never come to be or sometimes that just Nintendo related things themselves would you know be discussed and then would suddenly disappear. Before I get started I wanted to clear up a controversy on a previous episode that I did about the ColecoVision lost media. If you watched that episode you remember that I discussed the games that were shown in the ColecoVision catalog that never got released and we never got any ROMs for. Well somebody told me that a uh, <clears throat> homebrew company made those games so and released them so now they're no longer lost media okay now here's my argument with that and if you disagree with me that's tough shit but anyway here's what I think now many of you that are familiar with lost media and probably go to the lost media wiki are familiar with some of the different movies uh, TV shows, commercials, etc. that have gone missing. One interesting one in there that I would really like to see found, and that is the Filipino film Dracula, no, excuse me, Batman vs. Dracula. Yeah, it's unofficial, it sounds crazy, but it's been missing for uh, close to almost 40 years, I believe. I'd really like to see it, because I, I bet it's a lot of fun. Can't be, but, you know, a lot of fun. So, let's say, for instance, I got tired of waiting uh, for it to be found, and I took this camera that I have here and I got some friends together. We got some costumes and we filmed it ourselves. So is it no longer lost media because we made it? I don't know. Uh, let me th know what you think in the comments section below. I'd really like to hear your uh, viewpoint on this. Regardless, um, there's a lot of lost media surrounding Nintendo and not just the NES Famicom. There's a lot of other ones. So in today's video, we're going to talk about just a few of those. Again, I really appreciate any feedback or comments or anything, rumors that you've heard in the comments section below, and maybe I'll make a sequel to that. So without further ado, let's get into the games, or lack thereof in some cases. In our first game for today is New Kids on the Block, the official video game. Now, as hard as it may believe uh, that for many of you to believe that they were actually going to make a game for these jokers, it was actually planned. I read about it in um, Nintendo Power Magazine towards the end in the rumors section. Uh, Parker Brothers was supposed to make this game. Um, now, it was, of course, never made, and it never got pla past the planning stage as far as I've heard from other reliable sources. The only thing out there is this mock-up box that was on an auction somewhere in Europe, so it's hard to say what the game was going to be about or if they had any definite plans, but by the time this was supposed to come out, their uh, stars were kind of fading, but regardless, it would have been kind of interesting to see what they had in mind. Next up, Action 52 was supposed to get released for the Super Nintendo. Yeah, I know this is bad. I played it myself, and the NES version is just as atrocious as all the other YouTubers have made it out to be. Uh, I, yeah, it's, it's bad. Beyond bad. But the Sega Genesis version is actually pretty good. I've played it several times, and I've done a couple uh, plays with uh, Larry on here. Why this was canceled is anybody's guess. Uh, maybe because there was a lot of backlash. Uh, let's not forget the regular Nintendo version was horrible. It could have been the price. Uh, who knows? But if you do get a chance to try out the Sega Genesis version, I do highly recommend it. Um, but I don't think it was a big success, and thus probably why they never put out the Super Nintendo version. All right, next up we have uh, another interesting game, and this is Adventures of Dewey the Dolphin. All right. Now, uh, according to this, this game was also simply known as Dewey the Dolphin. It's an unreleased title for the Nintendo Entertainment System that was originally meant to come out in 1991. And again, this description comes directly from the Lost Media Wiki. Dewey the Dolphin was meant to be published by the illustrious Ocean Software. 
Ugh, boy, that's an uh, overstatement. A figurehead in video game publishing throughout the 80s and 90s. It was programmed by Alan Short and had graphics made by John Palmer. The game was originally sought out to be a coin-operated arcade game, but later switched to the Sega Genesis Mega Drive due to budgeting reasons, and its final version would have been ported to the Nintendo Entertainment System. Rumors speculate that the project was canceled due to its similarities to the upcoming Sega Genesis title Echo the Dolphin, although Echo would not be released until December of 1992. Another likely explanation for Nintendo shutting down the development of the project was due to it having a late launch window. Now, that is true because the in 1990 and 1991, the Super Nintendo uh, was released. A brief description of the game that was found in Electronic Gaming Monthly says, Swim through the depths of the ocean, watching out for all the hungry fish who are looking for a tasty morsel for dinner. Meet with Neptune, the ocean god. Okay. All we really have are a couple screenshots, and you're looking at one of them right now. Uh, no other information about this game is available. All right, next up we have a Game Boy Advance title. This is Animaniacs Hollywood Hypnotics. Um, and again, this one also is lost, and it looked like it was just about ready to go out the door. As they have screenshots, lots of them, uh, box, uh, instruction manual, everything except for the game itself. So it was supposed to be like a 2D platformer, you know, kind of typical. Now this was supposed to come out in what year, 2003. Now, if memory serves me correctly, I think by this time the show was actually finished, uh, but they were still putting out titles related to it and it was pretty much an endless rerun until, you know, the reboot. Um, so why was it canceled? Um, according to what I've read, it was canceled when Swing Entertainment became the subject of an insolvency procedure on February 11, 2003. Whereas Hollywood Hijinks, uh, another Animaniacs game, received a new publisher and was released as Animaniacs The Great Edgar Hunt, Hollywood Hypnotics remains unreleased. Um, so, like I said, uh, lots of stuff. We have just about everything except for the ROM for this one. Let's hope someday it does get found because I am a big Animaniacs fan and uh, someday I'll be doing an episode on Animaniacs games. All right, and next up we have Deja Vu 2, Ace Harding, Lost in Las Vegas. All right, this was supposed to come out in 1993, also a kind of a late release. Now, this was a port of a Mac uh, point-and-click adventure style game. Um, like I said, it was canceled for reasons unknown. Uh, although it, the game did get released for the Game Boy Color, it was called Deja Vu 1 and 2, the case books of Ace Harding, and on that great system, the Philips CDI. Next up, we have a Donkey Kong title that was supposed to get released for the Famicom in 1983. And in English, I'm not even going to try to say it in Japanese, is uh, Donkey Kong's Fun with Music. Uh, this was supposed to be an edutainment game uh, that had Donkey Kong and Donkey Kong Jr. in it. Um, it was originally going to be released for the Famicom in December 1983 for the price of 3,800 yen. But Nintendo canceled this game for unknown reasons and only released two educational titles instead. Donkey Kong Jr. Math, and a Popeye game. No prototype or any other information has surfaced from the screenshot, other than the screenshots here. The game was seemingly canceled for a variety of reasons, the licensing issue of the songs, using only children's songs, the small capacity of the Famicom, and the fact that the microphone couldn't analyze sounds. Okay, so uh, it would have been kind of neat to see what this would have been like, um, you know, learning to play music on the Famicom itself. But I kind of understand that it may have been too ambitious for the time. Next up, we have a Game Boy game, and that was going to be called Dweebers. Uh, yeah, that uh, that advertisement makes me really want to play it. Anyway, so this was a canceled game that was going to be developed uh, by a company by named Vic Tokai. It was set to be released sometime in ninety in eighty nine or ninety. Okay, so it was mentioned in a brochure and in a game, like, magazine. Uh, the description is like this. So, what if you're a styrofoam face? Hey, it's a dweeb world out there. Dweebers know that. That's why we're giving your hero a steam iron face, grasshopper legs, and little booties that look like Volkswagens. Think that's outrageous? Wait till you meet up with the fish larvae and uh, enemies. Come on, what are you waiting for? Be a dweeb. Uh, okay. Uh, one other theory is that this was actually going to be a game called Gathers that was also canceled, but hard to say. 
yeah, I'm kind of not too upset I missed out on this one. Next up, we have another a Game Boy, well, Game Boy Advanced game, and this is Flintstones Dino to the Rescue. Now, many of you probably played the uh, Flintstones games that were made for the NES. Uh, both of them are great games. One of them, of course, is highly, highly collectible, but we'll talk about that in a later interview. Now, this one was supposed to get released in the early 2000s for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, the player would take control of Dino, who must traverse his way through five worlds of varying settings, rescuing, rescuing one member of the Flintstone or Robo family at the end of each world. Along the way, the player can access bonus stages that have Dino either riding in a tortoise shell or on the back of an alligator. Okay. In addition to Dino's versatile moveset, which was said to consist of over 15 actions. The player can also make use of various items on their adventure, including a time-shifting buffalo horn and Bam Bam's club. Huh. Interesting. So, what happened? Because, yeah, this sounds kind of cool. I mean, even if you, liked the, if you liked the original NES Flintstones games, it kind of sounds like something I would have been interested in. Okay, so, um, canceled without any actual explanation. Uh, yeah, there doesn't seem to be much game footage at all. Um, yeah, no physical copies or ROMs. Uh, there are some screenshots out there, and of course, what you're looking at right here is the box art, but that's about as far as they got, so hopefully someday something will uh, pop up. And also, just for a uh, quick reference, just because you see screenshots of a lost game or a missing game, it doesn't mean that those are actual screenshots. They a lot of times use artists' renditions of what they think it may look like. So Next up, we have Hellraiser. Uh, yes, based on the films. And before you say they were actually going to make that, don't forget at one time uh, somebody had plans to make a game based on uh, The Entity, a movie about a woman who was continuously uh, assaulted by a ghost. So this game was actually supposed to come out in 1987, but was canceled for some. Now, the story behind this one's a little on the convoluted side. Um... I think a lot of it had to do with the fact that they were planning on making like a super cartridge, kind of similar to what happened with uh, Pursuit of the Pink Panther. Yeah, um, it was supposed to be like a game where you walk around um, trying to escape the puzzle box. If you'd seen the movies, you'd understand. Yeah, um, I don't know. Honestly, I think it was another case of being too ambitious for the game system at the time. So, um, but regardless, it... We do have this one screenshot, and there were some advertisements, but other than that, no playable ROM has been located. Now let's talk about something outside of actual games, and that is the E-Tone Jumpman. As many of you know, uh, Mario's original name was Jumpman, and they did release a plushie for uh, some of the characters that were in the game, including Mario, as that is pictured right here. Now what you're looking at here is the E-Tone plush Donkey Kong. I had wanted one of these when I was a kid, and my parents didn't get it for me, so recently I got it, so I'm very happy about that. But I'm actually here to talk about the Jumpman plush. A while back, somebody online found one of these E-Tone, uh, we'll just say Mario, because that's what we know him as, E-Tone Marios. Now the interesting thing was that the tag on it said copyright 1978. And Donkey Kong did not get released till 1981. Was this a misprint? Was this a hoax? You decide and let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Next up we have an event, and this was Slamfest 99. This took place in, uh, when was this? Uh, yeah, this was actually in Las Vegas in the year 1999. Um, now, El Supersonic Q, one of my favorite YouTubers and basically the gentleman who introduced me to the whole world of lost media, has been looking for this for quite a while. This was an event that was streamed online, and it's now lost. Now, how can that be? Well, most people believe it's because it was... Uh, streamed on that player called the uh, real player uh, you guys remember that and they used RA files and of course that player is long gone and uh, a lot of the files associated with it are also gone so he's been working really hard to try to find this one uh, I think it was an event uh, that was to advertise uh, the what, what, what's that game called that fighting that big fighting Nintendo game uh, 
Super Smash Brothers, I believe. Yeah, that's it. Sorry. Um, so if any of you have any idea about it or if you attended it or if you have any pictures or possibly know if there's any media related to it, let me know in the comments section below. And our final subject for today is Yeah Yeah Beavis. Now, in Beavis, I almost said Beavis. <laughs> but anyway, now this game, we don't even know if it really exists or not. It was found in an advertisement for Play It Again um, in Funko Land. Those, you know, those of you that weren't around back then, those were uh, places, stores that specifically sold games, uh, bought new and used Nintendo games, I think. That was about what they did. But anyway, so this title showed up on an advertisement. And ever since then, people have wondering, what the heck is this? Uh, it's been everything from a bad translation, a placeholder, or a copyright trap, or something. Regardless of it, uh, there is one There is one actual uh, theory that it may actually be a Famicom game, just a bad translation. People believe it may actually be this Rai Rai, uh, Rai 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 game. I'm not going to try to say the rest of it because I really hate when I butcher somebody else's language. Uh, but anyway, so this was a game that was released by the Famicom for the Famicom, and it was based on a TV show, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah, uh, uh, based on a 1980s horror comedy Taiwanese film called Hello Dracula, starring a little Chinese vampire boy. Uh, the Ray Ray, a, a Japanese sound meant to evoke traditional China, is reminiscent of the Yeah Yeah part of the title, while the baby in the title could have been rendered as Beebus. So that makes sense uh, if that's what it is. Um, but again, it could also be just the fact that it was, you know, just a, a copyright trap or something like that. But we'll never know exactly. Um, now, speaking of which, uh, somebody, uh, another, another uh, YouTuber decided to make a sequel uh, to this game that never got released. And it was made in 2022 by Rigged Games, and it's called Yeah Yeah Beavis 2. So let's have a look at that. So what you're looking at here is the PC version of this Yeah Yeah Beavis 2 game, which is the sequel to a game that may not have ever existed. So yeah, it's kind of based on that first game, that Ray Ray game that uh, I talked, to, I showed you the cart for there a little bit ago. Now, if you haven't played this game, it's really a lot of fun and it has amazing music and it's just like a great game for those of us who just love those 8-bit type games. And you can find it on Steam. Uh, and it, I believe it's now available for Nintendo Switch, for those of you that have that. And it's called Yeah Yeah Beavis 2. So uh, if you get a chance to check it out, I highly recommend it. In our next episode, we're going to look at one of my all-time favorite NES games, Bionic Commando. Well, that brings this episode of Classic Gamer 74 to a close. I really hope you all enjoyed it. If you did, let me know by giving me a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already, and don't forget to click that little bell icon down there so you'll be notified when I upload any new material. Also, please consider helping me out on Patreon. I've got some big plans for the future, and I'm going to need your help to do that. So please consider becoming a Patreon and help us out. Uh, the link is in the description below. Connect with me on all my social media platforms. And of course, as always, don't forget to leave some comments down below. I'd really like to hear from you guys. Um, it's a big part of the reason I do this channel. So. Until next time, I'm Anthony Gamer. Have yourselves a great week, and I will see you next time. Bye for now.